is Sarah. Welcome to the It's a Sarah podcast. Today it is Monday, June 19, 2023, and this is episode 88. I love to knit, I love to crochet, and I love to talk, so that's the perfect combination for making this podcast. I love talking about my knits and crochet so much that I make podcast episodes twice a week. Um, I'm coming to you from the Netherlands, so excuse my Dutch English, but I make my episodes in Dutch and in English, so be sure you pick the right one. Okay, um, I'm ready to chat with you about my crafty adventures from last weekend. Um, I'm not wearing my new Remy camisole. I didn't finish it. it. I was close to finish, but I didn't make it. I will tell you all about that in a minute. Um, but first, let me start with uh, where I am. I am at my knitting office. Um, it's quite a chic word for my bedroom. It's bedroom by night, knitting office uh, by day. Um, we have quite a big bedroom and uh, we don't have a big house. And I live in my house with my family, my husband and my three children and our dog. And um, it's really nice to have a place where I can... Um, sit and knit my children are teenagers so um, i don't have to take care of them all day and uh, when i need a moment for myself i can uh, i can sit here and i always uh, and i also love to make my podcast episodes here but it's june and it's quite warm in the netherlands for um, about two weeks now i guess and because our bedroom is at the second floor we call that the zolder, I think you can say the attic. Um, our roof is pointy, so we are on the top of our house. No, not on the top. <laughs> I'm inside. <laughs> I'm not sitting on the roof. Oh, I would love that, I guess. Maybe it's a bit windy there, uh, but it's really hot in here. So um, um, today it's a little bit cooler than uh, the days before. So I uh, really want to sit here because I miss my knitting office. Uh, and I did try with uh, the filming with the fan. I still think that's a silly word with the fan on, but it was too noisy. So um, um, yeah, when my head's getting redder and redder, you know why it's hot here. Okay, um, but I'm not complaining because today is a little bit cloudy and not so warm. I think it's 27, 28 degrees right now. For me, it's still warm. I'm a winter person, an autumn person, not a summer person. Um, although I must say I enjoy the weather when I just calm down and don't rush, but I don't always like to calm down, so <laughs> I'm forced to calm down. But it's okay. Um, okay, uh, last weekend I had a very fun and nice trip with my husband. I uploaded my episode. I filmed it on Thursday instead of Friday because Friday we were already uh, uh, we already started our trip. We did a two day trip, uh, a walking trip, and I will share more about uh, that trip at the end. We also did some filming, so you can see a little bit of the Dutch countryside. Um, uh, and uh, I, because of the trip, we Friday morning early, we um, we left and Saturday evening late, we arrived back home and I only worked on one knitting work, I guess, one knitting project. Uh, and that was my Remy camisole and we had quite some train time. We uh, we traveled by train and we had we have to travel for hours and hours. So I had quite some travel time, but I didn't finish my Remy camisole. I was close to, but yesterday I was so tired and I was thinking, do I want to challenge myself right now or do I not? And the answer was clear. I didn't want to. And that's absolutely okay. Knitting is not a competition. It's not a game. And although I I like to make it a game for myself every now and then, um, every now and then, not always. So um, I will finish it and I will tell you all about the camisole uh, and the progress I made in a minute. But let me start with what I'm wearing because it's also a camisole and it's uh, also a pattern by Kadri. It is the home camisole. Uh, 
And I made the home camisole and the Remy camisole last year together at the same time. I alternated, I switched between the projects, I guess. This one was a test knit. And um, let me warn you, this is not meant to be. <laughs> this was not part of the pattern. Um, I applied for the test knit. It was not my first, my second, I guess. Uh, because I really love the shape of the camisole, um, the V-shaped neckline, and it has a double V because it's um, interchangeable. No, you can, it, the front and the back are the same. How do you say that? Reversible, reversible. It's not interchangeable. It, it, they are not knitting needles. <laughs> I can't put out the, uh, the, the bottom from the back. I can't, I can't turn, nah. <laughs> I want to make a joke, but I fail. <laughs> oh, the, the, the words, the words. Uh, there was a funny joke in my head, but it, it doesn't work in English, I notice. <laughs> I skipped the joke. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so I applied for the test knit and I really love knitting it. It has the same construction as the Remy camisole. You knit a triangle and then you pick up the stitches. You do either a provisional cast on or you uh, uh, pick up just the stitches and you make the back one and then you do the same for the other, uh, uh, other, part, other side and then you connect the four uh, triangles together and you knit in a round and knit and knit and knit and knit in stockinette stitch. So uh, the first part you knit back and forth um uh, knit the knits and purl the pearls and then um, when it's uh, joined in the round you just have to knit um, you just have to knit you don't have to purl uh, it's top down um, obviously um the hardest part and it was not uh, uh it was not uh, the pattern's fault it was not Kadri's fault it was my own lack of knitting skills my knitting muscles were not big enough for that part i guess i don't know what was happening but um the uh, home camisole has an i-cord bind off um an i-cord border i have to say it was not really a bind off so you knit all the uh, all the camisole and then you pick up the stitches and make an i-cord bind off for the neckline and for the armholes and i messed up the picking up stitches Completely. I don't know, but it didn't work out. And I tried and tried and tried and I get frustrated and grumpy and rah, 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 and all those, those feelings. I'm quite sure um, a lot of you will recognize that those feelings that when something doesn't work the first time, it's okay. It's okay. It's lovely when it, when it works out the first time immediately, but, but it's okay when you have to try a second time and a, a third time. I absolutely... I'm okay with that, but when I when I come to the fourth time, or maybe the fifth or the sixth, oh, then it's getting hard. <laughs> my patience is very low, and my frustration level gets higher and higher, and and it, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, so it was not fun, and and I was also doing a test knit, so I really want to do it good. I think my Miss Perfect was uh, part of the problem <laughs> at that point. Um, but um, I got so frustrated and I wasn't having any fun and then I had to remind myself knitting is my uh, uh, having fun moment and I do this for relaxing and creating and, and being creative. So stop being frustrated. A, a little bit frustration can help you to come further, but too much frustration is not what we want, isn't it? So I thought, okay, I, I will do my own thing. And I added a two by two border because I really, uh, I'm a two by two, uh, knit two pearl two addict. I really love it for quite a long time. I, I always know that sometimes um, uh, you really love this and then and it, then it will be replaced by another border. But two by two, knit two pearl two is for quite a while my absolutely favorite. Uh, so uh, so it is always good with knit two pearl two. <laughs> so I I played safe and I did uh, I didn't f finish the test knit as it was supposed to be, but that's part of the deal. And um, uh, I am really happy with how it turned out. Uh, so it's a really nice camisole to wear. Um, the only thing I had uh, I'm a little bit. Um, not disappointed. Um, I think it maybe it would be better when I knit a complete cotton uh, camisole. I used Holst Coast 
and um, uh, that's a mix of um, uh, wool and cotton and uh, the camisole I wear when it's really warm because of the the bare bare air arms and the bare armholes <laughs> the armpits I don't know it there it will be fresh air everywhere and I like it when it's hot but the wool is itchy when it's to me when it's hot um, when it's not hot there's no problem but when I'm getting too warm and a bit little bit of a little bit sweaty then um, the wool in this yarn um, feels itchy so I wear uh, a cotton tank top under it anyway and um, yeah, I really want to make a 100% cotton uh, version of this because uh, I was always a bit afraid of knitting with cotton. Uh, everybody was saying that it was not nice and knitting with wool was so much better and, and, and more fun. But I've knitted a few items uh, for my little knees and um, did I also need some something cotton for myself yeah my Remy camisole oh, oh my Remy camisole I'm knitting and I, I I'm not um, I, w I want to say bored but that's not the word bothered I'm, I'm not I, I think it's okay to knit with cotton so maybe I want to uh, I want to uh, make more cotton items although I don't know if it really will happen this summer because the summer I have too much on my not on my needles in my in my summer uh, wish list already, but also because this camisole is really um, the interesting part is at the beginning the triangles the increasing and then when you uh, joined in the round you only have to knit in the round and when you knit in one color it can be quite boring uh, but also relaxing and. I really, uh, I love, I prefer working with uh, with colored yarns because of the excitement of the changing colors, but I prefer wearing uh, solid colors. Um, I, I feel more comfortable in it, I think. So um, uh, I also thought it would be a good idea to just cast on, do the interesting part and then um, have that little uh, knitting work in your project bag you can pick up and put down every now and then it, it, it will be a perfect travel work or it will be perfect f f for when you are doing phone calls or watching television or chatting with friends or whatever and when I start with it when the summer is nearly to an end it will be finished in May and that's also okay so maybe I will uh, think about that <laughs> Okay, normally I, I, I decide yesterday, oh, I want that, uh, that camisole and I want it tomorrow. So there's no time for relax and slow knitting. No, I just want it now because I want to wear it because it's warm and I need it in my wardrobe. So I slowly, my, also my summer wardrobe is growing. So that makes the need for having it right now a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> I can I do have quite some knitted garments, knitted camisoles and tops for the summer. So um that's okay. I can wear a, a knitted item every day also when it's quite warm. So uh I can relax and 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 let my summer wardrobe grow slowly. So uh maybe I will cast on one for summer 24, 2024 in September or something. It's absolutely, uh, I will absolutely recommend the garment, uh, the pattern. Um, next time I will try again the eye cord bind off because I love the look. And it's also nice to know that when it doesn't work out, I don't have to try five times. I When I tried two or three times and it still doesn't work out, I can add a ripped border. Um, when you are a beginner knitter, I think this is a perfect pattern. There is happening, uh, there are happening some things, increases, you can do a provisional cast on, it doesn't have to, I didn't do it, I guess. I, didn't do, I did do it, I did do it, I did do it, I did do a provisional cast on. I messed up completely because of all the tries for the eye cord bind off, so I had to hide some uh, damaged stitches under it <laughs> but you can you can um, you can do that anyway it's just uh, also when you make big mistakes you can hide them and you can fix it just be creative so don't worry when something happened 
Okay, enough about this one. I like to tuck it in my skirt because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I did add a border, a little border. I never wear pants. I don't even own short pants. I do own jeans, but I hardly wear them. And uh, I like it to in my skirt and to blues. Do you say bl blues, blouse? You put it a bit out. <laughs> in Dutch, we say that it's a bit bluest. Um, yeah, I feel really nice in it. So, okay. Then, uh, this is my Remy camisole uh, that I made uh, last year. I made these two next to each other and I showed it before and I told about it before. It is in my basket because when we were uh, traveling for the weekend, uh, I put it on so I could um, measure uh, when it, I needed. So we, I, we, we were backpacking, so I couldn't bring a lot of lot with me. I, I did, still did. <laughs> My husband was surprised. What is in your backpack? Oh, I need it, I need it. Um, uh, but uh, I had it on. I also put it off quite soon, quite quickly, because it was too warm. But um, it was nice for the measurements, because here is my second one. My black Remy camisole. And as you can see, I'm quite far. There's a lot of dog hair on it, because our dog is... Um, I don't know how you say it in English. In Dutch we say in de ruy. Um, she's losing her winter deck. And um, there's a lot of hair coming off her. And she was laying next to me on the couch last night. And you could see that on my Remy camisole. <laughs> Oh, I'm going, I'm coming, I'm going, I'm going. It's so annoying, all the hair everywhere. Um, okay, but this is my second Remy camisole. I'm knitting with a worsted weight cotton and it's, um, it's knitting okay and I really love it, but it's a quite heavy and thick camisole. So I don't know if it will be comfortable wearing when it's warm. Uh, I did try it on and it's a little bit higher. This one was so low and I, I was um, uh, uh, struggling with my cleavage. I think you say it like that. Um, I, I don't mind the cleavage, but not in all situations. So, um, and I really, and I can, I can fix it with a tank top under it, but I also want, really want a knitted garment that I can wear without a tank top under it for really warm weather. So the model, the fit is good for that, although I don't know if the, the strands will hang out of the heavy, uh, the heaviness of the yarn. Um, but it's quite a thick uh, fabric. I'm knitting this worsted weight on a 2.75 needle, so it gives a quite a good structure, but it's not too tight. It's really, uh, I'm a loose knitter, so I really love it. So now um, I think I did add a stitch marker. And I, I thought I, add, I need to add uh, five rows um, after the stitch marker, but then I realized that for the same length as this one, this, uh, this one is perfect, but then I realized that uh, when I uh, put it on, you stretch it out in the wide and then you lose some length. So um, I wasn't sure, and that was a little bit at the point yesterday I decided that I wouldn't finish it. I could could have finished it if I really wanted to, but uh, th then I had to uh, put it on to check the length. And then I was wearing a dress, so I had to put out my dress. I had to run upstairs to to uh, put out a skirt and uh, put on the skirt and then put it on. And it was way too warm for that. And I was so tired, so I didn't want to. And, and I thought, okay, I don't want a challenge now. I just want to knit relaxed and, and it's not always a challenge. So I can finish it later. So that was really nice. So I will, uh, I, when I'm done filming, I will put it on to check how many centimeters I will add. And then um, I really love this one also to tuck in my skirt, although it is quite thick. We shall see. The pattern tells you to add a ripped border, one by one rip, but I didn't do it with this one. I didn't like it. I didn't like the transition from two by two rip to one by one rip. So I skipped it and it's my plan to do that with this one too. I think um, the ribbing here is, it, it's making 
um, it's connected with the ribbing there and there, but there is no ribbing at the uh, neckline and the armhole. So I, when I would add a rib, a border, I would choose an I-cord border, I guess, because it's not really an I-cord border, but that's a bit, bit of the same look. But a one by one rib is doesn't match with this ribbing of this this border. So I I love it when it's connected and balanced. And uh, a one by one rib doesn't feel balanced to me, uh, so I won't do it. So yeah, I uh, I have two different needles right now. My needle didn't break. I have the bamboo one and the metal one next to each other, uh, 2.75 millimeters, because there was a little problem with my bamboo needle. I just covered when we were in the train. Um, I was knitting and I was feeling that there was a little, I don't know, a little splinter. I don't know how you call it in English. It was a bit damaged and my yarn was uh, staying uh, behind that sharp piece of wood. And I don't know what happened because I didn't drop it and I I didn't. There was not, there, I, I, there's nothing happened, I guess. But it was, it's rough and it's sharp and it was not knitting nice. And I want to pull it off and my husband said, no, 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 we have... Um, yeah there we go again we have that kind of paper we call it schuurpapier it's rough at the top and you have and and it's just uh when you have to paint something a wooden thing you do it with the schuurpapier with the with the paper to 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 scratch off the uh the is it scratch paper is scratch scratches this one i guess i don't know um uh to make it um uh, even and soft and uh, remove the upper layer so uh, and you have it in different roughnesses <laughs> you have, and, and for a knitting needle you can have a very very fine one and we have that here so um but i didn't uh, thought of it yesterday so i hope he can fix it but that's the point with the knitting needle and um I choose to put my bamboo needle on the right, I'm a continental knitter, and my metal needle on the left, and I don't see any difference, I guess. So, um, yeah, that's nice. I must say that I think I prefer with the um, smaller needles, I prefer my metal needles. I'm still, this one is a little bit, I'm still afraid that I will break it, and the point is a little, I don't know, I, I, my, my metal needles, um, I don't know, I have more trust in them, but my stitches are looking very nice, I'm, I'm very happy with that, so I'm not complaining, it was, I was not complaining, I'm sorry, I appreciate you very much, I'm sorry, I'm not complaining, I'm grateful, thankful, yeah, although you are a bit... <laughs> It's heavy to be a 2.75 bamboo needle, I guess. You are working so hard. Thank you. Okay, so I will finish my Remy camisole those, uh, one of those days. Uh, I, I will just knit it and I think I will wear it on Friday. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, then um, this morning there was another little... Uh, Crochet work. I work on this every morning, and we have we made some progress. We made a big decision. This will be an Ariana sweater. Um, this is my Scrappy Ariana. Last summer, I made the Ariana cardigan. I told a lot about it in the previous episodes, um, and I really want to make a Scrappy one, and I really enjoy it. I have a big basket with all the tiny scraps of sock yarn in all the colors and um and the uh the black uh, retrosaria mondim as the main color and i make a little tiny square or triangle every morning and i uh, attach them to the, the to the others and i'm building I, I i'm building a sweater i i it was my plan to decide um if it would be a sweater or a cardigan at the end when i finished all the body and the sleeves and then I would decide but I made a square too far I guess and then I thought oh I don't know and then I, suddenly I thought it, it was a bit I want to be um I want to give it my own um 
turn. <laughs> That's how we say it in Dutch. Je eigen draai eraan geven. I want to, I want to be creative with this pattern. Um, so I, all, I, I did have made an Ariana card cardigan already and now I want to make it into a sweater. And I, I don't think I have to um, um, modify the pattern a lot. I just um, uh, will close the front and I will make a V-shaped sweater and I think it will be really lovely. So um, I, uh, I did crochet the next square and then I will check which one, which one I want to the front. And um, yeah, then we will build further. The reason I already made this um, square is I have a nice plan. Oh, before I will say that, uh, I did uh, receive several uh, suggestions from you. Thank you uh, for weaving ends as you go um, while you are crocheting a granny square. And I will link them uh, I got two um, reels on Instagram. I will link them down below. Um, and I am practicing it, and I think it, it's working pretty nice. And I don't know if I really can if I really can recommend recommend it already because I don't know how it will stay when you are wearing your cardigan or using your blanket or whatever. But that will take some time because uh, before I can uh, tell you that. But um, I don't think I, I think it will really be okay because I can't find a reason reason why it will uh, it will be not uh, as good as weaving it in with a needle. So uh, I think it's pretty good. So I will link down below uh, uh, the Instagram reels and I think you can see them also when you don't have Instagram. But I'm not sure. But there is a way to weave in your yarn ends as you go for granny squares. Not all the yarn ends. Um, only the half of it, the 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 yarn end uh, at the beginning of your round. You can weave it in as you go uh, with this method, but the end tail you still have to weave in. But it's uh, what did I say? Seven hundred? No, no, no. A lot of yarn ends. I don't know how many anymore, but but you can you can decrease it with with the uh, with fifty percent. So that's uh, interesting, isn't it? But um, that was not what I wanted to tell. Um, I got a, I, I, I receive a lot of questions under my videos, and I don't do anything with them. I I always I read all the comments and I always give them a heart, but I don't reply and I don't answer uh, the questions because that's too time consuming and um, it always feels a bit uncomfortable to ignore the questions and give them a heart but it's um uh, i know you understand it's just uh, it's just too much and um i was thinking um i got so many questions about the granny squares and if i want to make tutorials and how do you do the as you go and i don't have any ambitions to make tutorials because i don't know there are so many good um helpful tutorials on youtube uh and and so many people um um uh, spending time to create those for you and i really i i don't think i can add something uh to that that's not necessary there is so much already but i um i i think i did um, find a way to to maybe help you because sometimes I add a little part at the end of my video but it's it's hard to find it back uh, I oh which which video did you show as you go uh, the granny squares uh, crocheting granny squares together as you go I can't find it I don't know either I have no idea I don't I don't have a administration for my videos and maybe a little bit in this but I don't look back so I thought I will make a little series of videos how Sarah does how I do how I do how do I crochet a granny square how do I weave my yarn ends it doesn't matter which project how do I tie my headband you have no idea how often that's that question's coming how do you tie your headband how do you wrap it I will make a video of it I don't know if it will be interesting and and also the rest but but then there is a separate playlist and you can find every time i'm working at a project how do i knit color work how do i do knit to pearl to how do i uh, crochet granny squares as i go and all the and again i'm not 
uh, a tutorial maker. I'm not someone, uh, it's just, I can understand the question. Sometimes I also want to see how uh, uh, someone is doing a specific thing. Um, and, and I can um, add links to the tutorials when I use tutorials. And I, it's also a place where you can add tips or suggestions or questions to reply to each other. So I will make a little series uh, of videos with no, no explanation, just me crocheting. And I did crochet this one, but I was, I'm a bit of a, uh, of a video nerd. So I was a little bit out of screen, so it wasn't clear enough. So I will make another one and then you can find it on my YouTube channel. I don't know why, when it's ready, but I have, I have a busy week. so. Uh, and I and when there's something you want to see from me, you can always let me know and maybe I will make a video of it. It's just a little bit playing for me um, uh, to show you thing, how I do things without uh, being it too time consuming. And uh, maybe it's a bit boring to see, boring to watch, but you don't have to watch it. Uh, only when you uh, when you uh, when you need some uh, some. Uh, yeah, I don't know, some inspiration or something. So that will come. Okay, then a little bit about our trip. Uh, I don't know if I told it in the beginning, where did we go? Because I'm very hot right now. My brain is um, too hot to think, I guess. Uh, my husband and I, we started uh, a long walk, a long hike. Uh, it's called the Pieterpad in the Netherlands. And it's a... Uh, 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 around about 500 kilometers uh, walk from the north. You can walk it each uh, way, it doesn't matter. But we start in the north at Pieterburen, that's close to the Waddenzee in the province Groningen. And then you walk uh, completely to the south in um, uh, Limburg uh, to the St. Pietersberg. And you cross all, I think, the east side of the Netherlands. You don't go to the west side to the coast, but the east side. And um, it's divided in little pieces, in etappes. And um, uh, yeah, it's very nice. You can walk it uh, every day apart or you can uh, do uh, etappes every now and then. And we decide to do that because we really, uh, we re really love uh, to be active. And it was a trip for my husband and me together. And it was the first time all the kids stayed at home. Also the youngest, uh, the oldest two, uh, they stayed at home uh, before, but also the youngest one. And my, our, she's 13 years old and her brother and sister were, her too, were, were, were here too. That's a, that's an uh, unnatural combination, all the, sa the, the sounds. Um, so we went by train to the north and it was uh, quite a big train travel <laughs> for us. In the Netherlands we're not used to uh, travel a lot because we have such a small country. Um, but we went by train and then we walked and it was very nice but it was also very warm. And um, I made a little mistake with my shoes because we did tr have a big train uh, travel time before. I'm sorry, I'm, I have an itchy nose. Um, and it was so warm, I put on my Birkenstocks and I brought my uh, my hiking shoes with me. And when we started, I put my feet in my hiking shoes, but my feet were already quite warm and swollen. And I didn't wear shoes for weeks. I didn't realize, but I always walk on my Birkenstocks when it's good weather. So, um, and in the winter, I always walk on my Mindel, so there's no problem with wooden socks. But now my feet were shocked. What are you doing to us? And I put them in my woolen socks in the mindles in the hiking shoes and i start walking and after a few kilometers i thought oh my heels are hurting so much and it was just my feet were too hot for the hiking shoes so i had enormous blisters on my heels and it was quite painful and it still is it's it's looking horrible so <laughs> I, it's it, it is a it's not so nice souvenir uh, to of a nice weekend but um, uh, it was uh, uh, walking the long distance. We walked uh, uh, 22 kilometer, kilometers uh, both days. 
I never walk such distance. Um, uh, I always walk about five, six, maybe seven kilometers a day, but not 22. My husband does. He's trained. He he will do uh, a, a, an 80 kilometer. I, I, I hate the word kilometer. It's it's hard to say. An 80 kilo, kilometer uh, hike in two weeks. So he trained a lot. So he, he was trained, but I wasn't. <laughs> so it was quite hard. And in the beginning, I was chatting and it was fun. And, and after a few hours, my husband said, I can't hear you anymore. You're not chatting anymore. What's wrong? I said, there's nothing wrong, but I don't, I, I just have to focus to my feet, step by step. Everything was hurting. <laughs> so it was so, it was quite hard. It was really, um, uh, I really crossed my physical boundaries last weekend and um, that's not something I really like. I know when you are very sportive, you really, there are quite some people who love to search for their physical boundaries and cross them and so they get, the boundaries are getting further and further, but I'm not one of them. I love that doing while I'm knitting or crocheting or, or even when I'm cleaning, but not when I'm, not on the physical way. But it was, I also realized how powerful my body is and, and also your mindset when you, my feet really hurt. But it was not an option to quit. Yeah, I could do it when it did, but I didn't want to. So then, and, and after I decided I just walked further, then, then it went all good. So that was nice. But I was very happy when we were finished and I could put out my shoes. And I, it was, uh, it was uh, so hot also. Um, but it was very lovely and uh, I love the Dutch countryside. I love all the little small houses and the nature and uh, yeah, I really loved it. And it was really summer weather. So uh, we had a good time. We had a good B&B and uh, it was really fun and nice. And we will in, in a few months, we will do the next uh, part and we will do parts. Yeah, I don't know. We don't have a goal. Uh, we will do it every now and then. And it was just uh, very nice. And um, our second uh, part of the hike ended in the city Groningen. And um, when we were there on Saturday afternoon, it was very busy and it was very warm and we were very tired and very he overheated. So, and then I saw a yarn store. I didn't knew the yarn store and I, I didn't, it was not my plan to visit the yarn store. But I saw it and I, I said to my husband, oh, I don't want to go there. And he thought, what? You don't want to go to the yarn store? What is wrong with you? You are really tired. <laughs> he said, maybe you should go. And, and then I thought, oh, maybe, wait, maybe some sock yarn for in my memory blanket. So as a memory of this hike and this day, this trip. So I went to the yarn store. It was called... Uh, Het achterpand, I think. So it's called uh, the back panel. Of uh, in 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 the Netherlands, we used to knit in panels a lot and then uh, sew them together. And uh, uh, I don't like that. So luckily, it's more a top down and in the round construction. Is also uh, uh, we also discovered that in the Netherlands right now. Um, but uh, the back panel was the name of the yarn shop. I liked it. So I uh, I went inside and it was a lovely shop with a lot of yarns, but I was overwhelmed by all the sock yarns. It was quite a lot of sock yarn I already own and I really want a special one, but I couldn't find it and I was hot and I was thirsty and my feet hurt. And then uh, I asked the lady and she said, oh, there's another part and there's another part. And I finally found a lovely yarn ball. And I'm really happy with this one. It is a sport weight yarn. That was not what I was searching for. But when I saw those colors, I thought, that's my yarn. That's a Sarah yarn skein. Um, it is uh, all the browns and grays. And uh, it will be perfect for a thick pair, a thicker pair of uh, socks that I absolutely didn't need uh, while we were walking. But um, it will remind me of the trip. It's Novita. Seasonal collection by Novita Kajastus. I don't know. I have no idea what it's me what it's meaning, um, but I really love it. So uh, I will knit some sport weight socks for myself. I don't know when. <laughs> Maybe on the next trip in the train. We did film quite a lot uh, while we, while we were walking, and we started, uh, especially my husband. He started uh, very. 
uh, uh, motivated. Um, I don't think he's in the. Yeah, I don't share my family on the podcast um, because it's actually a knitting and crochet podcast and. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he's in it. I don't think. I have a lot of nice pictures uh, of us together, but yeah, those are for ourselves. I'm sorry. I have a very lovely husband, but uh, I keep him for myself. <laughs> um, but we started with a lot of filming, but after a while we get bored. We are not filmers. Every time to pick your phone, I don't know. We, we just prefer to enjoy the um, environment and each other and just without our phones. But um, I, I also knew that, especially for the, the English podcast, um, a lot of people love to see a little bit of the Dutch countryside. So I did it for you and we had a lot of filming in the beginning and the second day it, it gets lesser and lesser and we were so tired and so hot. So, but, but I think it's still a nice um, sneak peek of the Dutch uh, countryside, the north in Groningen. Um, uh, it's uh, about four hours, three, four hours from where I live. I live in the south, um, but it's really nice and uh, we really enjoyed it. So, okay, that was it for today. Um, I hope you have a very nice week. I think it's a little bit cooler here right now. It's a little bit cloudy. They expect some rain tomorrow. And in the Netherlands, quite often it's then uh, uh, hard rain with a lot of thunder. Um, um, but I think it's very good for nature when we have some rain because it, it's quite a while ago and it's all uh, all dry right now. Uh, so that will be really refreshing and uh, for me too. <laughs> um, but I uh, I think it's nice. It's not as wa not as warm as it was last week. It's a little bit cooler, uh, but still uh, really summer weather. So I hope you have uh, a nice knitting time wherever you are and whatever you're doing, doing or crochet time, of course. Um, uh, in Dutch, I always say handwerken. Handwerken means knitting and crochet and all the other things you can do, embroidery, whatever. But um, I don't know if the word handwork is also the same, has the same meaning. Um, I think it's crafting, but I don't like the word crafting. I don't know. It's... Yeah, I don't know. It's not. It's not. It's not a cozy word. Crafting. I. I. Th I said it before. It reminds me of rafting, and it doesn't make sense. I know. I know. But rafting is a very exciting, and 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 uh, the activity on the water in a boat. And crafting is cozy and fun. And I. I really love the word handwerken in Dutch. Uh, I don't know if handwork handwork means the same. Whatever. Okay, um, I will put on my fan <laughs> and I will, um, uh, uh, what will I do? I will uh, start editing my videos and then I will finish my Remy Camisole. I wish you a very nice week and thank you for watching and I hope to see you on Friday. Bye bye!